So, I went out with Cheryl. I have never been in a make-out situation with a woman more aggressive. She was totally out of control. I mean, I did things with her I have never done with any woman ever. You finally had sex. You know, you have absolutely no class. Sorry, continue. After the movie, we went to her apartment. I had no idea if anything was going to happen. You know me, I expect nothing. So, we're in her living room. She turns on the television. The next thing I know, she's throwing me backwards onto the couch. She is all over me. She was an amazing kisser. I mean, it was like her lips were on fire. For a moment, I was afraid she might be running a temperature. <laughs> next thing I know, she puts her hands under my shirt. She digs her fingernails into my back. And she says, you're telling me you don't think Miami has a chance of going to the Super Bowl this year? Moreno had major surgery. You don't necessarily come back from a ruptured Achilles tendon. Well, granted, he's 32, but he's fit. He's hungry. Look at his stats. Second in all-time touchdown passes over 40,000 total passing yards. I'm telling you, she was like a wild woman. I was bleeding, but it was great. Incredible kayak doesn't work. Oh, it works great. I was paddling down the Charles having a grand old time until those punks from the Harvard Archery Club showed up. <laughs> Thank God I was wearing a life vest. <laughs> you ever wonder what we'd do if we ever had to replace him? I mean, can you imagine the ad we'd have to write? Guys, I just saw a rat in the ladies' room. Ah, oh, a little infestation problem, huh? Could you please do something about it? I'll tell you what to do. You call my friend Sid of Sid's Vicious Exterminators. A friend of yours? I'd rather have the rat. All right. I'm just telling you, Sid has gotten rid of rodents from some of the classiest restaurants in town. We don't have rodents. We have a rat. You have a rat, you call an exterminator. Exterminator? Guys, extermination flies right in the face of everything that Blue Sky stands for. We are a company that is dedicated to the appreciation, dare I say, the celebration of nature. Except for all that hunting and fishing stuff. <laughs> it's a rat! It's not even a good animal like a mink or an alligator, you know, something you can wear. <laughs> it's still a living creature. I say we capture the little fellow, return him to his natural habitat. So flush him down the toilet. He'll be in his natural habitat. That's barbaric. Nah, it's fun. It's like a big water slide. They love it. <laughs> How could you treat any living species like that? Oh, let me teach you something about the world, okay? There's a hierarchy. You know why they call it a hierarchy? Because some of us are higher on the archy than others. <laughs> Humans, they're at the top. Rats, near the bottom. After snakes, before cats. That's where rats are. Russell, Joel, do you have a minute? There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Hi. Hi. These are my partners, Russell Evans, Joel Goodman. This is Kate Patterson. She's my cousin. Pleasure to meet you. Hi. Kate's from Chicago. Oh, really? What a coincidence. I have an uncle in Decatur. <laughs> Which is not really in Chicago, but it is in the Midwest. So Chicago, huh? <laughs> Well, as of today, I'm officially a Bostonian. In fact, I need to sign the lease on my apartment by 11, so I've got to go. All right, give me a call when you get settled. Okay. Russell, Joel, it was a pleasure meeting you. I'll call you. Okay, okay. bye. Excuse me. Guys, get your tongues off the floor. You're going to leave drool spots on the hardwood. <laughs> wow, is she gorgeous. She's more than gorgeous, you know. She's an economist, graduated from Yale with a minor in philosophy, and she's not dating anyone. How could you possibly know all that? I know just about everything that goes on around here. Steve, I seem to be picking up conversations from other areas. I think these intercoms are broken. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> what is it with Ellie's family? I know, how can you be that smart and that beautiful? I mean, it's like some bizarre breed of academic and genetic overachiever. Kate, it's beyond normal beauty. It's that kind of unattainable beauty. 
Where are you going? To a tanner. <laughs> just like that? You're amazing. That's so amazing. I see some woman I'd like to get to know better, I'd go for it. That's just it. You go for it. You just go. It's mind-boggling. Joel, there's two kinds of men in the world. The quick and the alone. And now I leave you. <laughs> Hey, uh, partner, got a minute? Sure, partner, what's up? Oh, just a visit. Hey, this is looking good in here. I don't think your dating Kate would be such a good idea. <laughs> huh? Isn't that why you came in, to ask if I'd set you two up? Well, that and, uh, and to visit. <clears throat> why isn't it a good idea? <laughs> Russell, I don't think it's necessary for me to get into all the reasons why you're not right for her. All the reasons? Look, I haven't seen Kate since we were kids, but I know she just got out of a really disastrous relationship, and I'd hate to see her get into another one. Now I'm a disaster? I don't know what you've heard about me, but I I'm a good guy. I'm a, a fun good guy. I've heard that. And other things? Like what? Well, I didn't mean for this to turn into a personal attack, but you're kind of a hound. Oh, okay, okay, look, I may go out with a lot of women, but do you think I enjoy that? I mean, of course I enjoy some of that, but the only reason I date around is because I haven't found the right one. Well, I don't think the right one is Kate. What, she hates fun? Okay, Russell, be honest. When you first laid eyes on Kate, you didn't say, now there's a sensitive girl I can date. You just thought she was pretty. Well, you'd have to be blind not to know she was pretty. And, and even then, I think you'd sense something. <laughs> However you slice it, Russell, it, it's an attraction based on first impression, and I think it's risky. You know, not too long ago, Joel and I were debating our first impressions of you. You were beautiful and intelligent. And also a little goofy, frankly. <laughs> now, that was risky, too, but we took a chance on you, a, a big chance, and it's worked out great. All right, Russell, you win. But I can't promise you it will happen. All I can do is ask. That's all I'm asking for. Just do me one favor. Treat this seriously, okay? You and I are friends. Kate is your cousin. You, you don't have to ask me that. I just don't want to see her get hurt again. I'm not going to hurt Kate. You have my word. So about this rat problem? Look, I don't mean to pull rank over Kenny, but, uh... Do I have rank over Kenny? <laughs> the rat has rank over Kenny. Do it your way. It's a good day for rats. <laughs> So, how'd you do? Ellie's setting it up. You don't seem very excited. Oh, I'm excited about Kate, but it's Ellie I'm thinking about. Please leave something for me. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I I'm thinking about something she said. Ellie actually felt like she had to warn me not to hurt Kate. Well, I can understand that. You're just looking for fun. You're not looking for a relationship. Why does everybody say that? Well, I assume that's why you call yourself the quick, unless there's some other problem. <laughs> Oh, you know, Kate could be the girl I'm going to marry. I don't mean to imply that you're not ready, um, but the girl you're going to marry is probably still teething. <laughs> I'm capable of getting serious if it's with the right woman. Look, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I hope for the best, but uh, I'd just be surprised, that's all. Okay, fine, then you'll be surprised, and, and Ellie will be surprised. The whole damn world will be surprised. I know I'll be surprised. Could somebody fix these, please? <laughs> I feel fortunate we were able to find you, Nils. Most of the exterminators I called were only interested in killing the rat. No, well, that's what separates the exterminators from the relocators. <laughs> so, what exactly are you going to do, Lars? Nils. My name is Nils. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. An kan inge ting, an ar an idiot. They're going to use the Verminator 2000. The Verminator 2000 emits a sound that, while completely inaudible to the human ear, is excruciating to the vermin in question. You will hear nothing. I hear it. <laughs> I hear it. Do you hear it, Mr. Svenlinger? 
That's the most I do. Well, that's great. Now, all we have to do is get the little rat to hurl himself onto the broken glass, all our problems are solved. Hey, there you two are. I've been wondering where you were. I know, it's late. We're sorry. A two and a half hour lunch? We just started walking down by the river and talking. Well, before we knew it, we didn't even get around to eating. <laughs> You know, I should be mad at you. You've been in town for two weeks and we still haven't gotten together for dinner. You're always with this guy. This week, I promise. We could spend one night apart, couldn't we? Well, I'd rather not, but I understand. <laughs> I better get to work. I will see you tonight. Meet you at eight. Okay. Well, I should get back to work. Russell? Yes? Thank you. For what? For not being the guy I thought you were. So, Mr. Nooner. <laughs> don't tell me you're going out for two and a half hours every day and just talking. Have we got any crackers or anything? Batteries running low? <laughs> no, I know what you're thinking, and I'm telling you, it's not happening. Kate and I are going out every day, and we're talking. That's all we're doing, just talking. Talking until I feel like my brains are squeezing out of my ears. If I could put them in a bowl and eat them, I would, because I'm starving. <laughs> Is there a problem with you and Kate? Just a little one. She loves me. I want to throw her in front of a train. <laughs> Why do you want to throw Kate in front of a train? She's driving me crazy. She's so... bored. <laughs> what is this? Freeze-dried steak. It's horrible. We've got to have it with the freeze-dried onions and mushrooms. <laughs> Why is she so boring? She spends hours talking, exploring our relationship or her feelings or my feelings, what makes us the way we are, what is the meaning of life, does God exist? I mean, this is time you never get back. You know? <laughs> You know, I, I would never admit this to Ellie, and it, it kills me to admit it to myself, but maybe I am shallow. Well, you're obviously a great listener. Well, that's just it. I'm not listening. I've got my budget meeting head not going. I look like I'm listening, but I'm a million miles away. You're not listening during budget meetings? <laughs> I know you're listening. I'm not listening. I thought you were listening. I'm not. Well, you're great at it, because you had me fooled. You've obviously got her fooled. But I don't want to have her fooled. I don't want to have her at all. I mean, if, if this is what a mature, meaningful relationship is all about, I, I don't think I have a stomach for it. <laughs> well, then, break up with her. How? How? I, I, there's no way. I, I promised Ellie I wouldn't hurt her. <sighs> wow, this is so ironic. <laughs> Here you are with this woman who's so amazing, so... So filled with depth, intelligence, insight. Someone so intrigued by life's mysteries and so eager to explore them. Someone I've been looking for since the third grade. <laughs> and you don't want to be around her. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You two would be perfect together. Me and Kate? Well, she would love you. You, you. A spiritual and intellectual equal, you two could talk each other into oblivion. <laughs> If life was fair, I would be with Kate. Life can't be fair. You can steal her. What? If, if you stole her from me, everybody would be happy. Russell, don't objectify her. You can't steal a woman. She has to want to be stolen. Oh, God, that's just the kind of stuff she loves to hear. <laughs> you two are going to be great together. Just talk to her. See if there's anything there. Well, how can I talk to her? She's always with you. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, let me think, let me think. Um, she and I are having dinner tonight at the Golden Dragon. You go in my place. Tell her I'm stuck in a budget meeting, and, and, and then it was your idea to come down and keep her company. That makes you the really sensitive one. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, come on, come on, help me out here. Joel, this is killing me. Every moment I spend with her, a little piece of me dies. <laughs> but more importantly, I want you to be happy. <laughs> a surprise i i'm afraid i have some bad news russell's not going to be able to make it to dinner he's tied up in a budget meeting oh no 
I, I realized he wasn't going to be able to make it, so I thought to myself, <laughs> I should come down and keep Kate company. Well, that is so sweet. <laughs> Although I must say I'm not surprised. Russell is a very sensitive man. It only seems natural his closest friend would be, too. <sighs> Your girlfriend's very lucky to have a man like you. Well, she would be if I had one. I guess I'm still searching for that one special person to share my life with. It is so hard to meet new people, isn't it? <sighs> I mean, and to feel like you can really connect with them on a personal level. You know, most people these days, they look at relationships the way they look at fast food. Instant love. They seem to be saying that as long as they get their interpersonal fix, however hollow or superficial it may be, and they can muster the strength to face a new day, then they're happy. You know? Well, they don't even care that there's really no foundation whatsoever for which to build a meaningful and long-term relationship. That is so sad to me. I've spent my entire adult life looking for somebody that I can connect with in the spiritual sense. Men, in general, don't want to work on the spiritual connection. Well, women will practically open their veins to connect, to share, and to hopefully learn more about themselves and their partners. But men play their cards so close to their best, sometimes it's hard to know where you stand with them. Don't you think? Hi, Joe. Are you ready to order? Oh, gosh. I haven't even looked at the menu yet. Could we just have a few more minutes? Now, I don't need to see or make such sweeping generalizations. But you know, Joel, I'm very in tune with things. People, the world around me. I can sense things. I think that comes from making a concerted effort to become more in touch with myself. At this point in my life, I am at home with myself. Connected with me. It seems you know? to me that we spend our lives locked in this daily grind, you know? Desperately trying to make our lives better by making more money, which naturally takes more work, which takes more time, and then leaves us with essentially no life. We go through life with blinders on, focusing only on the carrot that dangles before our noses. Carrot? Meanwhile, all around us, the world just keeps steadily you know, going you, forward. I interrupt you for one second. Just hold all those thoughts. I'm going to be right back. Russell, you're not shallow and Kate's not deep. She's deadly. Come down here and break up with her now. And Russ, you better eat something first. Now, yesterday the problem was a faulty relay. Today I assure you the verminator's tone will be outside the range of human hearing. Only the rat will detect the piercing waves. You see, quiet and efficient. Holy God! What is that? Oh my God! Oh my God! Excuse me, Russell, may I speak with you for a minute? I just got off the phone with Kate. Good luck. <laughs> Ellie, I'm sorry. I know it looks bad, but I wasn't taking this casually. I, I really tried. I know. It was a very committed two weeks. What did you do? Have sex with her and decide you were through? We never had sex. Oh, so she wouldn't have sex with you, so you just cast her aside? It's not that either. Well, then what was the problem? The problem is... The problem is your cousin talks too much. What? Now, now, now don't get me wrong. I I'm sure that somewhere inside Kate there is a wonderful woman screaming to get out. <laughs> At least talking at great length about the implications of getting out. So you're taking his side? He's telling the truth. I, I was with her. She doesn't shut up. Oh, you two are so typical. You can't stand a woman with something to say. Ellie, Ellie, you got it wrong. The only reason I stuck it out with her as long as I did is because I care so much about what you think. I mean, if, if I didn't, I, I would have ended it the first time she paused for a breath, which was last Wednesday. <laughs> Believe me, I didn't want to hurt Kate. Well, you did. And now I have to have dinner with a very dear relative and spend the whole evening apologizing for setting her up with you. What is an unexamined life worth? 
You tell me. Are we supposed to just go through life without comment? Isn't it our <laughs> duty to ourselves to try to examine and to make sense of the seemingly random lunacy of it all? <laughs> My God, she's out of her mind. <laughs> journey for anybody to take is that journey inward Russell was right she is deadly but if we can't understand ourselves how do we ever expect to understand and to become intimate with another human being I can spend hours at a time with nobody else but me now I'm not saying I don't need interaction with the rest of the world I crave it just like anybody else there are times when I need to just remove myself <laughs> and contemplate me and what I am. <laughs> For every moment that I spend in that state of meditation, I emerge a stronger and better woman. <laughs> here he comes. Here he comes. Get over here. You got to see this. It's great. No matter what we think of Kenny, He's still my cousin, and he's a human being. I can't see him tortured. Suit yourself. <laughs> You're right, this is pretty great.